everyone, thank you for watching CCN Crown City News. Your news, your neighborhood. I'm Sunita Joshua Madison. We're going to change around our show to accommodate some technical issues, but we still have a great show for you. We'll start with a very special guest. Everyone knows Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in baseball as a player, but few know about the man who broke the barrier as an umpire. Emmett Ashford was the first African-American umpire in the major leagues. Emmett Ashford also was the first umpire to umpire for both the major and minor leagues. In honor of Black History Month, the Baseball Relinquiry and Pasadena Public Library have programs honoring Anna Emma Ashford. Today we're joined by Emma Ashford's daughter, Adrian Ashford Bratton, who wants to make sure the next generation remembers her father's legacy. So thank you so much for being here, Ms. Ashford or Bratton? Bratton. Bratton. And thank oh. you for inviting me. Well, tell me a little bit about your father. What kinds of stories did your dad tell you about his days coming up in the league? How difficult was it for him? It was difficult, but I think he spared me the, the heart-wrenching parts because I was a child. Uh -huh. And uh, he and my mother were divorced when he started to uh, gain more prominence, so I wasn't there. But as I was older, he told me about the hazings and the type of things that were yelled at him from, from the stands while he was behind the plate and that kind of thing. Um, but he still used a sense of humor in doing so. And I think that's probably what got him through. His sense of humor was somewhat of a defense mechanism, but he was always a carefree personality and someone who was charismatic. Okay, well, tell us a little bit about, you, you know, we, we mentioned that Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier for baseball, but um, how did that inspire your father to become an umpire? He heard it on the radio one night, and then he decided, I can do that too. You know, he thought this was the impossible dream, but this made it possible. It's, so, it's amazing how stories like that can just make you feel like, well, if they can do it, why not me? Right. A door is open. Okay. And, and so what did he do? How did he make it happen? He worked hard. And, and what, what he did, I think, because you have a different situation than Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson was a player, but my father was someone who was giving directions. Absolutely. So he was, he a, was in a position in of authority. Yes, yeah. he was. And that was a harder thing to stomach. And so um, as he worked hard doing what he loved to do, he gathered supporters and admirers and people who, a couple who backed him. So um, the word was put out. And then also grassroots wise with the uh, California Sentinel, I mean California Eagle and the LA Sentinel at that time, there were people who were getting support and, and having people write letters. And so the pressure was on. And again, there were people up high who, a couple of people who really thought it should happen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because he had to do everything. Sometimes he couldn't stay in the same hotels as he needed to, or, or there would be white umpires who wouldn't want to work the field with him. Did he tell you any of those stories? Yes, and I think some of them are in print. Uh, well, the one he told me was the fact that because he was somewhat of a loner when he, they were out of town, he would go into various places, and I think one place, this bar he went into, it was, uh, he was talking to the guy, you know, he befriended people, and come to find out this guy's name was Jack Ruby. Well, when you consider the Kennedy assassination and Sirhan Sirhan, he didn't know who that was at the time, mm -hmm. but he was speaking to someone of importance there, and also... So he was speaking to the Jack Ruby. Right, because there was somebody who, who was nice to him and being a friend. W wow, <laughs> so. that's quite a story right there. <laughs> that one, and then the, uh, someone asked me, why did your father like opera? How did he learn to like opera? Well, again, he told me he was, um, again, a loner, and he was staying somewhere, and his uh, co-workers would, wouldn't take, invite him out, or, you know, and so he would go to the opera or things of that nature and just learn to enjoy things and learn new things. And, and so he was just one of those people with just his own style and personality. Tell us, I, I know that he had a, a style of umpiring that people either loved or hate. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, it was very dynamic, mm -hmm. and I think uh, the part that you hear the most about is the dancing. And that, um, that is a natural aspect. That he learned that in umpire school because he <laughs> and my mother met um, when Central Avenue was at its heyday and you had live bands, and they were members of the Rug Cutters Club. Okay. So he was so naturally he just animated. Had that style about him. <laughs> well, now you've been trying really hard to get him into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, I understand his ashes are there currently, yes. correct? Why is it so hard to get you know his name into the Baseball Hall of Fame? I think um, 
it's a very closed operation there. <laughs> it's somewhat nebulous because, mm -hmm. uh, what was it, um, uh, 2008 or nine, the Chapman University Law Department, Law School, decided to, that they put up the Facebook page and they decided to launch a campaign. And um, they found it very frustrating trying to find out when things would happen, what were the parameters, and um, it just, it was just, um, like I say, it seems like a closed operation. Okay, so it's And just, the main uh, argument was that even though he had spent his life umpiring, he had not spent the uh, required amount of time in the major leagues, okay. even though he spent 15 years in the minors. Oh, boy. And the reason why he wasn't in the majors, we, uh, we know what that was. Absolutely. So I tried a couple of years ago to send out an email. I, I read their page, and they had a pioneer category. I said, this is perfect. And at that time when I read the page, there were no time constraints. So we had another letter writing campaign right. and come to find out they revised the rules and there are time constraints on, okay, well, on the hope, Pioneer. <laughs> hopefully there'll be another writing campaign and, and you know find a way to get him in there because you know future generations need to know about him. In fact, one of the ways you're doing that, you have an event at the Allendale Library coming up February 25th right. and um, you have a couple of books that you've written about your father that you'll be signing there. Right. Okay. And I have the adult one and the children's one. This is the one where I want to let the future generations know that there is a positive sports figure and also one who was prepared for his rise in fame. Okay. Um, I even have pictures of his composition book from school with the A's on them. And the fact that he had done community service, so he was ready to deal with all sorts Let's of people. Let's get him in the Baseball Hall of Fame. <laughs> Let's start it up right now. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you for And we hope me. to have you back when he is in.